Hello and welcome to this episode of Four Traveling Teens. I'm Shay Pepper, the Traveling Teach. Today we're going to hear from Josie. Now, Josie's interview, like her sister Luna, were recorded in late 2021. And so some of the information does reference COVID-19 and some of the restrictions that were in place at that time. Again, we had a little bit of a delay last year in trying to find young people, also just personal busyness while trying to complete training for RAGBRAI, which was a bicycle ride across Iowa. Trying to get back at it for this year, and so I hope you enjoy this episode and the episodes that I have coming up in the next few weeks with different young people that I've been able to interview over the last six months or so. At the end of the episode, stick around because I'm going to talk about what it's like to eat at McDonald's in other countries. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Four Traveling Teens. I'm here today with Josie. Hey, Josie. Hi. Uh, could you introduce yourself to our listeners? I'm Josie, and I'm from Texas, USA. Awesome. Um, but you're not in Texas right now, are you? No, I'm in Costa Rica. I just got out of Panama. Oh my gosh. So how is Costa Rica? Really rainy, but really beautiful. Is it the rainy season right now there? Do you know? Yeah, I'm pretty sure my mom said it is. So I feel like it's the rainy season every time I go anywhere. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) It it does feel like that a little bit for sure. And we experienced some of the rainy season in Thailand Mm -hmm. and it was insane. Yeah, me too. Always (laughs) raining. So Josie, why do you like to travel? I think it like when I get the opportunity, it's like better to like experience cultures like in person than just like hearing about it in a history class when you're probably not really paying attention that much. (laughs) Yes, I agree. Um, And I think that that's something that is really important for educators to understand if they're listening into this, that making something real and having an experience on location, even if it can be a virtual location, which is what I do with my learners. Um, is better than just trying to imagine it from a book. And I think that's really, really important. You can sit and look at travel books and you can sit and look at pictures online, but going to a place, I think just changes who you are and how you see the world. Yeah. So if you could just pick, if, if it didn't matter, like, you know, oceans and whatever, how, what would be your favorite way to travel by boat, car? Do you love the train, the plane? How do you love to travel? Definitely the plane because it's the fastest. Okay. I don't like being stuck in a car for a long time or anything. And you have siblings, right? Yes. No one wants Usually, to be stuck in the car with their siblings. No. <laughs> Usually we're just traveling with uh, my little sister, um, but I have four other siblings. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what is it you love about flight, about plane travel, other than that it's fast? Um, well, I always call window seat so I can look out and see where we are and like try and, I like to try and guess like what country we're over or like state, whatever. I'm glad I'm not the only person that does that. So <laughs> we just flew from Denver to Seattle for a couple of days for a friend's birthday. And we're, I look out and I look down and it's all of these circles and it's clear that it's like irrigation for farming and things, mm-hmm. but I thought we should be over like Washington state by now, but it looked really dry. And I was super confused. I was like, maybe we're not there yet. Maybe we're somewhere else. Turns out, I think there is something like very dry and almost desert, like stuff in Oregon. And so it might've been kind of, yeah. on the border. Um, but another really neat thing. I don't know if you've ever flown into Seattle before. Um, but when we flew in, you could see Mount Rainier, but you could also see Mount St. Helens, the volcano that erupted mm-hmm. in the eighties. And you could see these other mountains in the distance. So everyone talks about loving being able to see Rainier on a clear day in Seattle, but Mm -hmm. it was actually really, really special. Um, And I'm not a big, I'm a beach girl. I'm not really a big mountain person. So it takes a pretty impressive mountain to impress me. And I was just (laughs) like, I just had my face just squashed to the window to see Rainier. It was really, really cool. (laughs) So how many states, countries, or other places have you been to already? Um, I think I've been to like eight countries and I haven't really been to that many states, actually, probably around like five total. <laughs> we have had a few uh, podcast interviewees who have, who have been to more countries than they have states yeah. for sure. <laughs> Do you have a state in mind that you'd really like to go to that you haven't been yet? 
Um, I really want to go to Montana. Same. It what do you really want to go pretty. to Montana for? Uh, the mountains. I want to see the mountains. <laughs> I am more of a beach person, but the mountains there look really pretty. And their lakes. Wow. Do you know about the rainbow pebbles in the one lake there in Glacier? Yeah, I saw pictures of that. That's where I want to go. So pretty. Me too. <laughs> so why do you think it's important for tweens or teens to travel away from their home area? Um, kind of like what I said earlier about like how like it's just like important to see like firsthand how other cultures live and how it works there. And like just when you get the opportunity, it's a good thing to do, I feel like. Absolutely. And all right, biggest travel dream. Money were no object. Where would you go? What would you do? Probably Greece or Norway. Tell me why. I don't know. I don't even really have specific reasons for both of them, but I've been wanting to go to Norway since like, uh, I don't know, probably like five years and I was going to go to college there and not anymore, but I wanted to. And I just want to go to Greece because probably because of Mama Mia, honestly. (laughs) And honestly, I think it's okay to get travel inspiration from movies and things like that. Some of my travel inspiration has come. So, so I'm an old lady and I have like a calm app for like meditation and like sleeping and stuff. And, (laughs) um, and they have sleep stories about different places. And so I'm like obsessed with the idea of going to Iceland because they have an Iceland sleep story. Mm -hmm. And have you been there? No, I, uh, I've had some friends that went there this summer and it just looked so cool. Like it was like all like gray and like white. And I was like, what is happening? (laughs) Well, and so the sleep story tells you about this plate, this like drive that you can do called the golden circle. And it's all these different things that it includes like a volcano. It obviously includes like the blue lagoon, the famous like hot spring. But what I am most obsessed with is this is like one of the only places or the only place that you can swim between where two continents meet. It has like a, like a underwater, like Canyon and you can swim and snorkel and dive there. And you're between two continents. And it's like either the only place or like one of two places in the world or something you can do this. And the water is like super clear. It's cold. It's cold year round. The water's like 50 degrees year round, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I am desperate to get to go and to do that, even just for five minutes, just to say that I've got two continents. Like that just sounds amazing. (laughs) And I have never been to Greece. I would really like to go. And I have never been to Norway. I would also really like to go. Um, So yeah, um, listeners will know that my big travel dream is to see the penguins in Antarctica. If money were no object, that's where I would go. There or right now, because COVID, Australia is still closed. I'm desperate to go to Rottnest Island in Australia and see the quokas. They are. I'm kind of scared of all the spiders there. Uh, It's not too bad. We've been twice, and honestly, we haven't seen a bunch of spiders. But we also didn't go like out in the bush. I'm sure if you go out in the bush, it's way worse for spiders and snakes than kind of we did kind of the cities and stuff like that in Brisbane (laughs) and Cairns and stuff. But um, the quokka is one of the cutest little animals you have ever seen in your whole life. You'll be disappointed if you see it. And they are super friendly because they don't have any predators on the island. And this is like one of the only places they live. And so they just like come up and sit next to you and take selfies with you and stuff. And you're not really supposed to take selfies with them. But I mean, if a quokka asks for a selfie. If it insists, I mean, go ahead. Exactly. (laughs) So talking about trips, talking about like dreaming of places to go, how much input do you have or like to have with your family when you plan it, when they plan a trip? I mean, throughout the year, my mom kind of like asked me like, where do you want to go? But it's usually wherever uh, Scott's cheap flights tell her the cheapest flight is, that's where we're going. <laughs> she goes, guess what? I just walked us to wherever we're going. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> How do you like that? Do you like that mom just kind of says we're going here or do you, do you wish you had a little more input? Um, I like it. It's usually not like the places that would be my first pick, but it's also still like, I wasn't thinking about going there, but now I do get to go there. Probably wouldn't have gone there other ways, you know? Like yes. I wasn't thinking I want to go to Costa Rica. I want to go, instead I want to go to Norway, but now it's cool here and I'm glad I got to come here. So um, have you, have you seen a sloth yet in person? I have, I saw one in Boca del Toro in Panama and I saw one here. There was one in our yard here. What? 
It was so cute. I got the cutest picture of it. And there was one in Panama that was at the in the tree at a restaurant. And it was just so cute. It looked like it was smiling. They do look like they're smiling. Have you, yeah. do they stay like really up high or do they come down like lower? We did see like a few like all the way up high, but they just look like kind of like a blob of like brownness. Yes. <laughs> kind of looks like a rock, kind of like unentertaining. But they're, the two that I was talking about were really low, but usually they are high. Usually they like come down. I think my mom said like once a week or something to go poop or something. Yes, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> they do. They usually but, stay in the trees and then like once a week they come down to like yeah. their business and then they head back up. They happen to be visiting in low trees, so they couldn't really go high. <laughs> So when it's time to pack for these trips that your mom has said we're going on, um, <laughs> other than obviously like your regular stuff, like your clothes, your shoes, what are your must-haves? What do you have to have to leave to go somewhere? Um, this is more like a packing essential, but I always need my packing cubes because otherwise nothing's fitting. I bring too much stuff. So I Can you explain packing cubes for anyone who's not familiar with them? Packing cubes are basically, I do not know how it works because it just seems like you're just adding more stuff, but you like, basically it's just like a zip up cube of fabric that you like can roll your stuff into it and it somehow compacts it all and just lets it all fit really nicely. I don't know how. We use packing cubes too. So I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I always am like, I like it because then if we're going to be somewhere for a shorter period of time. I can just kind of pull the cube out and put it in like the drawers or something yeah. and not have to like unpack and then try and repack it all. And then I just put it all in a little pouch and put it back in my suitcase. It's great. Yeah. That's what I do usually. So you have to have your packing cubes. What else? Um, a million swimsuits and a million pairs of clothes. I brought eight swimsuits <laughs> this time. Like hmm, maybe I need that many, but have them. Well, if it's rainy and wet every single day there and you're pretty much living in your swimsuit, how are you going to keep them dry otherwise, right? True. I thank you for supporting my multi swimsuits. Yeah. (laughs) We've all got our things and I think that's brilliant. I like all my options, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Do you have any any shows you like to download or are you a paper book versus ebook or are you not much of a reader anything else you got to bring with you definitely not a reader at all I don't I do like my shows but usually I always forget to download them so it just never happens and I end up just listening to music the whole time ah so um let's see here um so when you're going to go on these trips and and mom has kind of like planned where you're going to go what are you still looking to do like I'm sure that there's still an element of like what do you want to do Josie do you go for the hiking? Do you love the food? Are you all about the history, the mountains? What's your jam? What do you love to do? Mm, I like pretty beaches. I like malls. We like to, me and my mom like to go find all the malls everywhere. Like when we were in Asia, we found these like ginormous malls that had so many floors and it was an all day activity to go through the whole mall. It, it was crazy. So no malls here really, but usually that's what we like to do. I like the beaches. I like the mountains. Kind of like a little bit of everything. I'm I'm a big nerd, so I love like the museums and the history and things oh. like that. <laughs> but one thing I do love is to try, and we don't just exclusively eat like Western food, but I do love to mm-hmm. try things like Taco Bell, if there's there, or KFC mm-hmm. or McDonald's in other countries, because they typically have different food in yeah. the other countries. Um, Special McDonald's. Yes. It's- Yeah. Yeah. So I know there's like a stereotype that Americans just like to eat like American food, other places. It's not the case, but I love to try the different things Mm -hmm. that are in other places. One of the things we had in New Zealand was like an orange soda, but it was like a Slurpee, but it was at their McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So it was like an orange soda Slurpee and it was so good. Oh my gosh. It was either New Zealand or Australia. And it was, it was definitely worth the stop. That sounds really good. I want that now. <laughs> um, too much fast food places here, but yeah. they have really good love food. So, right, yes. Um, one thing that we learned about in Jamaica is that it's really changing the way the culture works. So, 
typically in Jamaica, families would get together on Sundays and the moms and the grandmas would do this amazing cooking with all this jerk chicken and all this amazing food and plantains and everything. Well, as KFC started to come in, people's um, like experiences. And so they would bring KFC to the Sunday meal or they wouldn't even get together for the Sunday meal and things like that. And it's really changing like the culture in Jamaica in certain parts by having these fast food places. So it's definitely great to have local food and local experiences for sure. There actually was a local Jamaican restaurant that they had jerk meat for you. I do. I do love, are you a vegetarian? No, we just wanted to try that. So good. Jerk chicken is delicious. So we're starting to talk about kind of trip memories and experiences. What is your favorite trip memory? Mm, Definitely one of my favorites was when we were in Thailand and I think it was Chiang Mai, I want to say, either Chiang Mai or Bangkok. And there's a Chinatown there. And me and my mom were riding tuk-tuks and they're, they're crazy drivers, but uh, they were like blasting music. We were riding tuk-tuks and it was really fun. That sounds amazing. We did not, we did not ride a tuk-tuk when we were in Thailand. Um, That's how we got everywhere. It was so fun. So we live. Kind of oh, go ahead, honey. What was that? Oh, I was just saying it, it's really fun to ride tuk-tuks everywhere, but it's a little scary because they, they're a little fast and everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we lived there for six months and we lived in a Thai neighborhood. So we typically walked everywhere in our neighborhood and then we would take the sky train into the city. We were just outside of Bangkok. But one thing that we loved to ride are called can cars. Um, obviously they have a, a Thai name, but basically it's like a converted truck with like seats in the back and it has like a roof. Um, and you kind of get on it. So it's kind of like a bus, but like a mini bus, but it's open. Um, and you literally paid like five cents or 10 cents to ride it. Oh, so, like no. Pain. What was that? I think, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And we loved those because we would take mm-hmm. those over to the grocery store and then <laughs> Stephen would go grocery shopping. Cause I hate grocery shopping. He's our, he's our grocery shopper. So he would go grocery shopping and I would go, they had a foot massage place right in the middle. And so I would have a Thai foot massage. And he would go and do the grocery shopping. And then we would have KFC and we would have, because they have super spicy KFC there that's so delicious. And then we mm. would have um, Dunkin' Donuts there has like a blueberry donut. That's not something we have. It's like a powdered donut filled with blueberry, almost like blueberry pie filling. It's amazing. Mm. And so we would do all that. And then we would ride the can car back. And we did that like once every two weeks or whatever. And that was super fun. <laughs> So I, I love that you rode tuk-tuks. We need to get back to Thailand. We would like to, and I would definitely like to ride one for sure. Definitely, definitely go to Krabi if you haven't. Okay. I've heard good so, things. That town. Yeah. That was definitely my favorite town in Thailand. It's a beach town. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of the new one to go to. Phuket got really, really touristy. And so Krabi was kind of the one to, to start mm-hmm. to go to, at least back then been a minute since I've been in Thailand <laughs> so <laughs> there's probably other new secret places you're supposed to go that are less touristy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> did you prefer kind of Bangkok in the islands area or did you prefer Chiang Mai um definitely in the islands I like being by the beach you know I usually kind of just like to sit on the beach and not go in it yeah no I'm with you um there are a lot of large animals in the ocean <laughs> so I usually will swim or snorkel like close to the shore and like paddle around and like sit in the very shallow clear water and then I will sit on the beach and read yes <laughs> I'll snorkel about one time in the whole trip and then I'm done with snorkeling okay <laughs> so if you feel comfortable sharing what is your worst trip memory definitely from this trip um when we were in Panama uh so like I, we had this big storm and a tree fell on the house and broke the roof, but that's not even the worst part. Well, it might be to my parents, but to me, it was not the worst part. Uh, so like there was like probably like an ant nest in that tree and then their home was ruined. So they had to find a new place and they chose my bed frame. Oh no. As their new- yeah. So at first it wasn't that bad and it was just like a few and I was like, oh, maybe I got some food on my bed. So I washed my sheets. They didn't go away. And then more came and it was like, kind of like kind of like the gross point but like wasn't terrible so 
Um, my stepdad sprayed like right everywhere and I thought they went away. So I slept in my own bed and then I woke up with probably around like 100 to 200 ants all over my bed and some of them crawling on me. Oh my gosh. And I went downstairs at like 3 a.m. crying. I was like, mom, they're all over me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then okay. I just slept with my little sister. <laughs> were they the biting kind or not too bad? Yeah, they were like, I think they're like big fire ants. I don't know. They were. Oh my gosh. That is definitely great. the worst. Yeah, they're like all like kind of like in between like the net and like the side of my bed mostly. And then like a few of them were like getting crawling onto the bed. And I was confused because I kept waking up to one on me. So I'd slap it and then I'd go back to bed. And then, then another one, I'd slap it. And then I eventually was like, why do they keep coming? And then I freaked out. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I would have freaked out too. And I would just like to say for our listeners who don't know, um, Luna and Josie, Luna is another episode you've heard recently and mm-hmm. Josie are sisters. And I just want to give a shout out because the number of interviewees that I have, and I don't care, I think it's hilarious, but the number of interviewees who for their worst trip memory throw a sibling under the bus of the sibling threw up or the sibling did this or the sibling did that. And that's their worst trip memory. Well done to you and Luna for not throwing each other under the bus and just sharing your own trip memories. (laughs) Yeah, Luna actually planted all of the ants on my bed. I knew it. I knew it. (laughs) She put them all there. Like, I don't like them in one at a time. (laughs) Yep, she did. (laughs) Oh, because her her worst trip memory was Panama as well, but was the border crossing uh, oh yeah, sales that you had. So that's actually yeah. at first what I was thinking of. Then I was like, oh, the ants were definitely worse. Oh, for sure. The ants would have been worse for me too. I'm with you. And I, <laughs> I like critters, but I don't like them in my bed for sure. Unless it's my little dog truffles. No. And even don't like ants anymore at all. No, I'm there's, sure not. There's, I, yeah. There is a, uh, like our neighbor here in Costa Rica told us that like, there's like an ant season. There's a season for everything here, I guess. But like, there's just like they'll like crowd once a year then they'll just like go away but there's like these like tiny like I guess picnic ants probably like really tiny ones all over our counter (gasps) like in the kitchen and they're like they have like a little trail on the wall and it's like driving me insane I'm like no no more ants please (laughs) I would feel the same way so well done to you for surviving that story frankly and for sharing it with us Uh, so I appreciate you being brave to relive the traumatic experience of the ants in your bed. Yes. It would be traumatic for me too. I feel a little traumatic, right. traumatized for you. So <laughs> oh, thank you. But don't, don't but dear listeners, don't let this put you off. It's very rare to find ants in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like they wouldn't have been there if their tree hadn't fallen over. So it wasn't, I yeah. mean, other than Josie secretly putting them in your bed, it sounds like they wouldn't have been there. <laughs> So do you have any other funny or interesting stories that maybe aren't your best or worst, but that you'd like to share with me? Um, probably the only thing I could think of is the border, but they probably know that story. In case Josie is your first episode with us, um, go back and listen to Luna's episode and hear about the travails of their border crossing. But what was the worst part of the border crossing for you? For her, it seemed like that because you didn't have your COVID stuff because they changed the rules all the time and things. Was that the worst yeah. part for you or was there was there something else? Um, well, it was just kind of like an annoying experience more because like it was like a really hot day and really humid and you have to keep your mask on the whole time because obviously they're testing for COVID. And there's also this like man on a speaker the whole time for like four hours we were there preaching, yell preaching oh. um, in Spanish. And it was, I was like, can you please stop talking, please? <laughs> and we, when we came back to Costa Rica, we had to go to the border again, you know, and he was still there preaching. Probably does like, okay. every day. He probably does. He's probably there every day. And it was like for four hours. I was like, okay, dude. It was kind of funny though. It's a little bit of entertainment. <laughs> So let's talk about eating. Are you an adventurous eater? Mm, normally I'm like a pretty picky eater, but I'll kind of like try one bite of like whatever my mom's having and that if I like it, then I'll like order something like that, but I'll like try it one time. And then if I don't like it, it's, I'm not going to have it. But usually for myself, I'll order something I already like, know I like, not something crazy. So what is the most crazy thing you, you think you've had while you've traveled? Um, I, 
I think I accidentally tried my little sister's octopus. Didn't want to try it though. And I tried the the jerk chick jerk chicken. Uh-huh. It was it was okay. But pretty much just stick to what I like. I like I love the ceviche here. It's so good. Oh, I love ceviche too. Can you describe so ceviche awesome. for people who don't know what it is? Ceviche, it's uh, raw fish and like onions and like other like spices like cilantro and stuff um, cooked in lime juice because the acidity just cooks it somehow. Magic. I know. I think it's magic too. And I love it. Delicious. So it's not raw when you eat it because it's cooked by this. But yeah, so good. My mom is not a huge fan of sushi. And I keep trying to tell her that ceviche is like magic cooked through lime juice. And she's always like, you know, (laughs) I'm like, but it's so delicious. I don't, I don't like su- sushi either, but I love ceviche. Mm. Oh, now I want ceviche. <laughs> so um, how do you deal with things that you don't particularly care for when you travel? Is there anything that causes you maybe fear or anxiety when you travel? And, and how do you deal with that? Maybe not knowing the language or not knowing where you are or heights or something like that, that that's not really your jam when you travel, but you do it or you deal with how you feel about it. I don't really have like much fears like of heights or anything so I'm usually pretty good at that like me and my little sister are really excited because we're gonna go zip lining at some point while we're here so my mom said not me but you can go <laughs> so we're really good at that. I actually really like heights usually except for ladders for some reason I don't know I just don't buy with them and as for language uh when we're in Spanish-speaking countries my stepdad speaks Spanish so I get along I get around just fine usually with him and when we're in Asia like almost everyone there like uh, spoke English so never really had a much of a problem with that so I don't really have much fears about traveling except maybe the random jaguars coming to eat me or something yes that that would be a concern random jaguars and ants yeah. <laughs> oh and ants. Yeah, I now have you have the, now you have a new anxiety <laughs> yeah I'm a little scared of them now they kind of hurt so I'm not a big fan of heights myself but I did go zip lining in Jamaica and I, mm. I do want to zip line through the rainforest in Costa Rica. If for no other reason than to high five a sloth on the way by that's, that's my, oh my God, awesome. <laughs> I think the last time I was zip lining was in Mexico when I was like 12. So I'm really excited. Oh, do you all have plans to be back in the U S anytime soon? What was that? You have plans to be in the U S anytime soon. I will be in the U S because I'm going to be living with my dad there while my mom, little sister and my stepdad are like kind of full-time traveling. So when we go back, I will stay there. They'll be there for like a month-ish and then they're going off to Spain. Ooh. So. And so will you stay home to, and you know, finish high school again? Okay. I was going to say, I know that, I know that Josie yeah. is homeschooled. Uh, I'm sorry. Luna is homeschooled. So you, you go to more traditional mm-hmm. school. Um, I was, I, I just kind of transitioned out of like being homeschooled. I'm like still like homeschooled, but um, we have a community college called Lone Star that I go to and I do all the credit there. So I have my last year. So I have to like go in person to that. So, and Um, I have my job. So cool. Gotta be home. Well, I was just curious because if you do enjoy things like zip lining, um, Mm -hmm. there is underground zip lining in Kentucky and you, you zip line through a cavern in like through a mount, uh, like what was like a mine and into a cavern in Kentucky. And it's really fun and it's mostly dark. I mean, you can see there's some light, but it's, it's pretty cool. So if you ever find yourself in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, even just for like a a school trip or whatever, you should do it. It's good. I'm going to look that up. (laughs) So what is something that you want parents or teachers to know when they're planning a trip for teens and tweens? probably to see what the kids like want to do like when we went to Asia my mom made me and my little sister both these like lists of all like things you can do there and she told us each to like na- label from like one to however many it was of like in order what we wanted to do most so least excited about doing there so that she could like plan it according to like what we wanted to do you know and I thought that was a really good idea that's a super good idea thank you for that very very wise tip I love that Um, so what would you say we've, you know, someone's just stumbled across this podcast and wondered what this whole thing is about. What would you say to other tweens and teens who aren't sure if travel is for them? If you get the opportunity, do it because you don't know if you're going to get to do it any other time. That's kind of what I say, because 
sometimes I, I like to be home usually, but I also like to travel. So it's just kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to get to do this. So I'm just going to go. Cause she usually does give me the option. And like, you can go if you want. So it's like, well, probably won't get to do any other time. I'll go. Right. So just give it this opportunity. I think that's really great. Cause I think sometimes it can be easy to think, well, I'll just do that again in the future. Mm-hmm. And, and the time never comes. Um, when I, that's kind of what Steven and I do when we travel, we work very hard to say, okay, if we were to never get back to Paris again, what would be really, really sad if we didn't do, or if we never get back to Australia again, what would be really sad if we had never gotten to do? So that's kind of even here in the U S cause we're in a five year, 50 state road trip. Um, it's going to be extended because of COVID, but, um, we are, that's kind of how we look at the States. We, we try and say, all right, what are all the things we really want to do and, and we kind of pick the things. But then every so often there's like, if I were to never come back to X place. I would be really sad if we didn't do this. So mm-hmm. we try and make sure that we jump on those opportunities when we can. Yeah. And I think that's, that's good really, idea. I think that's really wise. Well, Josie, thank you so much for hanging out with me and for telling me your stories. Um, I hope you have a wonderful remaining time in Costa Rica and good luck with high school and stuff this fall. I hope to maybe talk to you again in the future. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay. So now that we've had a chance to listen to Josie's great episode, I wanted to just share with you a little bit because since recording this episode and mentioning that I enjoy going to McDonald's at different places, I have now been to four different countries and experienced their McDonald's. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about the experience. So let me first start by saying that by no means do I think that you should go to other countries and just eat McDonald's. That is not what I am suggesting. We love to eat local food. However, we have found that some places like McDonald's, KFC, have different foods on their menu than we have in the United States. Um, And so I wanted to kind of share with you what some of those were. Um, The one thing that we have found the world over French fries are the same. And in our opinion, in our family, the French fries are the very best French fries in the world, McDonald's French fries. And so having them be the same, no matter whether you are in Dubai, whether you are in France, whether you are in South Africa, whether you are in Mauritius, um, these are having the French fries be the same, like makes it like, yes, we are definitely in McDonald's. Um, So in Dubai, um, we went and ordered and two things that I had that I have never seen in the United States was a vegetarian spicy pizza puff, which was kind of almost like a hot pocket. If you're from the US, it's kind of like a hot toasted dough. And then inside it's stuffed with things. And in this case, it was kind of stuffed with vegetables and kind of pizza flavoring and things like that. And they had a chocolate donut. So being able to try and enjoy that in Dubai was uh, definitely something that I enjoyed. Then we went to France. We went to France this past summer. And while we were in Paris, we went to McDonald's there. Um, We had some friends visiting with us and we were like, we love to (laughs) eat McDonald's in other countries. Would you also like to try McDonald's in other countries? And they were like, yes. So we ordered from there. What was interesting there is that the bread was very different. The buns for the burgers that we chose were almost kind of like a square, um, like crusty bread roll rather than your traditional hamburger bun. And um, my husband, Stephen, his, he ordered one that came with an egg on it. He also got kind of like potato wedges rather than French fries. And you could get macarons. Now, this is not to be confused with macaroons. People often confuse these. Macaroons, coconut cookie with like pastry and like sometimes chocolate on them, macarons, the ones that look like little sandwiches. Um, And they have like a nice little silky shell and they're filled with like a ganache cream filling in the middle. Those are macarons. So the burger was, oh my gosh, oh, fantastic um, at McDonald's. And then that thick, like nice toasty bun just made it so much better. This year, we have recently come back from Mauritius. Now, unfortunately, the things that they had for food-wise in Mauritius were not very different than the things that we have in the United States. 
However, because uh, the things that they did have that were different, they were out of. However, their dessert selection was very different and had an incredible piece of chocolate cake and a piece of blueberry cheesecake. Stephen and I tried both of them. Um, I will say that in my experience, um, Asian countries don't always do chocolate, particularly chocolate cake, well. It's it's just a different flavor profile and just doesn't hit the same as it does in the U.S. or even in the U.K. Um, uh, we're big Hershey and Cadbury fans. However, the chocolate cake in Mauritius was awesome. So if you find yourself in Mauritius, go to McDonald's and have chocolate cake. So good. Um, <laughs> and then finally, after we went to Mauritius, we went on to South Africa. So in South Africa, I ordered the Cajun chicken uh, sandwich. It didn't feel particularly spicy or anything. Um, and my mom and stepdad were with us. My mom ordered a chicken flatbread. Oh my gosh, that was so delicious and like life changing for McDonald's foods. I wish we had the chicken flatbread the way they do in South Africa here in the US McDonald's. The other thing that I enjoyed is that the sizing was more what we're used to in the US. In all three of the other locations that I mentioned, Dubai, France, in Paris and Mauritius. Um, when you order a large there, it's actually the size of a US medium. And then a then when you order a medium there, it's the size of a US small. Um, so I always order a large because I'm expecting it to be a medium. And in South Africa, a large was a large. And so I was very excited about it. Um, one thing that I would avoid at the South African McDonald's. Um, they had what they called like a Belgian chocolate sundae. And it was basically their soft serve vanilla ice cream with this deep fried, almost like Belgian chocolate batter thing. Um, it, it was not very good. The inside was tasty because who doesn't want melted Belgian chocolate? The outside just tasted like fry oil. So my personal preference as someone who doesn't even like vanilla ice cream to begin with. So kind of all I ended up left with was a lot of soft serve. Um, I would skip that dessert at the South Africa McDonald's. If I were going to rate them of the ones that I enjoyed um, best to, to least, I would say probably enjoyed the Paris McDonald's the most, followed very closely by the Dubai McDonald's, um, then the Mauritius McDonald's, and finally the South Africa McDonald's. But maybe I just need to order you know, different things, uh, hopefully, if and when I go back to South Africa. This has been an episode of Four Traveling Teens, a podcast for teens and tweens who love travel, whether they're actively traveling or just dreaming. I'm Shay Pepper, the Traveling Teach. At the time of this recording, I am on a five-year, 50-state road trip around the U.S., although with COVID, it's going to end up being six or seven years. Ugh, darn you, COVID. But I travel full time with my husband, Stephen, and our dog, Truffles. I'm a professional youth worker and online educator. I'm passionate about learning on location and want to bring that experience to as many young people as possible through my virtual field trips. To learn more about my travels and online classes, go to thetravelingteach.com. To follow Truffles' travels, our trip from her perspective, which I am sure is infinitely more interesting to most of you than I am. Go to at Truffles Travels US on Instagram. To be a guest, tween, or teen on the podcast, just reach out at thetravelingteach.com forward slash contact.